Hi everyone, my name is Anam and I will be presenting the paper titled Compressed Beam Selection in Millimeter Wave Systems Without a Band Partial Support Information. This is joint work with Professor Robert Heath. So the problem of beam selection in millimeter wave systems, what beam to use at the transmitter and receiver, can be solved if you have channel state information. But getting the channel state information in millimeter wave systems is hard. First, because the pre-beam forming <coughs> signal to noise ratio is very low. And secondly, because there are a large number of transmit and receive antennas. So you have to estimate a large number of coefficients. Using a large number of antennas is necessary to overcome the pass loss at millimeter wave systems. And it is practical to use a large number of antennas because uh, due to the wavelength, uh, the antenna size at millimeter wave is small and a large number of antennas can be packed into small form factors. Finally, there are some hardware constraints in millimeter wave system. So you may not have direct access to the channel. For example, you may have limited number of RF chains or you may be using low resolution architectures. So you do not have complete access to the channel. And all these uh, practical constraints combined mean that millimeter wave channel estimation in itself is a very challenging problem. However, the good news is that the millimeter wave channels are sparse. This means that in the space, because at millimeter wave there is limited scattering, so only a few directions are illuminated with a, a strong receive power. And this fact has been used in the prior work and compressed sensing based channel estimation strategies are proposed. But the prior work assumes that any angle of arrival could be active with the same probability, which is a reasonable assumption if you do not have any prior information. But it may so happen that you have some prior information about the channel and that would mean that your support, you have some non-uniform information about the support, meaning that your prior belief about the support could be that some directions could be active with a higher probability compared to the others. In this particular work, we will obtain this prior information from sub 6 gigahertz channel. Obtaining information from sub 6 gigahertz channels is interesting because it is possible that millimeter wave communications and sub 6 gigahertz communication will happen simultaneously. This could be, for example, a multiband communication system that falls back to sub 6 gigahertz if there is blockage in millimeter wave or it may be so that for indoor coverage you may be using sub 6 gigahertz band and for outdoor coverage you may be using millimeter wave. And even if millimeter wave and sub 6 gigahertz are operating simultaneously, you may use sub 6 gigahertz band for control signaling. And with all this motivation there is some work that uses sub 6 gigahertz channel information for millimeter wave uh, link configuration. For example, uh, the measurements from legacy Wi-Fi were used to configure the 60 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi link. Furthermore, the millimeter wave correlation was predicted using sub 6 gigahertz correlation. And there is some work on scheduling the sub 6 gigahertz and millimeter wave communication in a multiband communication system. And all this work that is using sub 6 gigahertz information for millimeter wave system is primarily motivated by the fact that there is spatial congruence in sub 6 gigahertz and millimeter wave systems. That is to say that the directional power distribution uh, as a function of frequency does not vary uh, completely rapidly. As an example, we have this graph that shows the directional power distribution at 5.8 gigahertz, 14.8 gigahertz, and 58 gigahertz and one can observe that the directional pattern of the power is very similar. There are some other characteristics of the channel that are also very similar across frequencies. For example, the delay power delay profile of 10 gigahertz and 30 gigahertz was found to be very similar. In a different work, there was very minor difference uh, between the CDFs of azimuth and elevation, angle of arrival and angle of departure spreads. So all this evidence suggests that there may be enough special similarity between sub 6 gigahertz and mm wave that one could fetch information at sub 6 gigahertz and use it as the prior information of the mm wave channel. So in this particular work, we use out of band information 
for beam selection at sub 6 gigahertz first of all uh, at millimeter wave sorry first of all we use the limited scattering nature of the millimeter wave channel to exploit sparsity and formulate the l1 minimization or a compressed sensing problem secondly using out of band information we weight the l1 minimization program hence uh, yielding the weighted L1 minimization and we evaluate the performance of the weighted compressed sensing in comparison with in band only compressed sensing. This is to judge whether out of band information is always useful or there could be situations where one may be better off using in band only training. For the system and channel model we assume that sub 6 gigahertz and millimeter wave systems both have uniform linear arrays the sub 6 gigahertz system has an RF chain per antenna so it's a fully digital system the millimeter wave system on the other hand has only one RF chain so it has an analog architecture both sub 6 gigahertz and millimeter wave systems are assumed to operate with narrow band and we assume that the channel coherence time is long enough that you could fetch information from sub 6 gigahertz and use it in millimeter wave link configuration with these assumptions we write the channel using the geometric channel model that incorporates the number of antennas at the UE which is transmitter in this case, the number of antennas at the base station, the number of paths, the path gain alpha, the array response vector of the BS ABS, the array response vector of the UE AUE and the angle of arrival and angle of departure that we call nu and omega. With this particular channel model, if one were to select the beam, then ignoring the sparsity, one possible approach is to use analog phase shifters of enough resolution at the transmitter and receiver that you could synthesize the DFT code books. If you could synthesize the DFT code books, then you could train using the DFT code words at the transmitter and for each transmitting code word, you could use the receive DFT code book and in essence, you could get the virtual channel representation of the channel that would look like AU, A, ABS Hermitian H AUE where AUE is the transmit code book, H is the channel and ABS is the receive code book. This due to the limited scattering of the channel will give you only high very few high coefficients. But the training overhead of this approach scales with the number of antennas and it is in fact the number of transmit antennas into number of receive antennas. This training overhead can be reduced dramatically by observing the limited scattering nature of the MM wave channel and using compressed sensing ideas. So in compressed sensing ideas we use a random precoder at the transmitter as opposed to a DFT precoder and similarly a random combiner at the receiver. We use a bunch of random precoders and for each precoder we use a bunch of random uh, combiners at the receiver. Collectively all the precoders are called a matrix F and collectively all the combiners are called a matrix Q. Now we vectorize the receive signal to give it this chronicle form where we have the precoders chronicle the combiner and the VEC of the channel. This VEC of the channel can be given the form of this sparse representation by observing this relationship between the channel and the sparse representation G. We exploit this representation here so that we can have an underdetermined system in which we are trying to reconstruct an unknown that is sparse. Here onwards we establish some notational simplifications for F transpose cron Q and AUE conjugate cron ABS. Specifically we call F transpose cron Q a measurement matrix and AUE conjugate cron ABS a dictionary matrix. With this notational simplification, when we realize that we are trying to reconstruct a sparse unknown G, we could minimize the L1 norm of G subject to this constraint where epsilon is the tolerance that is related with the noise variance. This optimization problem however does not incorporate any prior information about the support G. If you have some prior information coming from sub 6 gigahertz in this case, then you could instead solve an alternative problem that minimizes the weighted L1 norm and these weights capture the prior belief about the active elements in the support. Specifically, you will choose 
to penalize the more likely entries less in this optimization problem. But the question is how would we get the weighting vector from the sub 6 gigahertz information. Specifically in this problem we assume that we have access to the sub 6 gigahertz covariance matrix which is easy to get because there are no hardware constraints so one could only get the covariance matrix by numerical averaging. Then we pursue a subspace based algorithm to figure out the mean angle of arrivals of the rays in the channel. The subspace based algorithms decompose the covariance in the signal subspace and the noise subspace and then we introduce a notation C with the angle of arrival and angle of departure and observing the fact that the noise subspace is orthogonal to the signal subspace we calculate this projection of C on the noise subspace and for the correct values of phi and theta that is the true angle of arrivals and angle of departures in the channel this projection will be zero and that particular phi and theta will be the desired angle of arrival and angle of departure. One could go about finding the phi and thetas by exhaustive search you could use you could select a bunch of values for phi and theta and try all those values and see where you get a zero or instead you could form this problem as a polynomial in phi and theta and try to find the roots of that polynomial and those roots will give you the values of phi and theta this way you will have much lower computational complexity and a better accuracy. This particular algorithm that does the polynomial based angle of arrival and angle of departure finding is called the root music algorithm because we are interested in finding the angle of arrival and angle of departure jointly we use a variant of root music algorithm that is known as double root music this can the double root music algorithm can detect uh, the sources that are equal to the number of receive antennas into number of transmit antennas minus one and it does the automatic pairing between angle of arrival and angle of departure so that there is no mismatch issue. Obtaining the angle of arrivals and angle of departures using the double root music algorithm the next question is how would we get the weight vector. So in calculating the weight vector we take into consideration two sources of imperfection. One source of imperfection is the possible mismatch between sub 6 gigahertz and mm wave that we abstract using the probability of mismatch uh, called here rho of mismatch. The second source of imperfection is the estimation error. Even if all the paths in sub 6 gigahertz and mm wave were similar you are estimating the paths at sub 6 gigahertz so there will be some estimation error by the double root music algorithm that we abstract using the probability of success of the double root music algorithm. Using these two values we find the weight vectors specifically we distinguish between the entities that are likely with the value 1 minus rho SDRM 1 minus rho mismatch and the values that are less likely have this value 1 minus this value that turns out to be rho SDRM 1 minus rho mismatch. With access to the weight vector we are in a position to solve the weighted L1 minimization problem so we look into the simulation results. For simulation we consider that there are 16 transmit antennas in the millimeter wave system and 32 receive antennas. There are two transmit antennas in sub 6 gigahertz system and four receive antennas. The millimeter wave system operate at 20 gigahertz and sub 6 gigahertz system operate at 3.5 gigahertz. Both systems have inter element spacing of uh, lambda over 2. So the inter element spacing in lambda is actually half and all these parameters mean that the aperture of the millimeter wave array will be similar to the aperture of the sub 6 gigahertz array. We use 4 bit phase shift quantizer at the transmitter and 5 bit phase shift quantizer at the receiver. These number of bits are enough to synthesize the DFT code books and we plot the results as a function of the number of measurements. The blue curves here are the weighted L1 minimization and the red curves are L1 minimization the black curve is the exhaustive search. We have three cases here that correspond to different coherence levels of the channel. We focus on the coherence infinite so we see that exhaustive search is the upper bound that is the best that can be done. But then we see that the weighted L1 minimization gives significant advantage over unweighted L1 minimization and that is specifically true when the number of measurements is small. As the number of measurements increase 
the in band only training is sufficient to get a significant significantly better estimate of the transmit and receive beam so one may not need out of band information but to reduce the training overhead the out of band information can be very beneficial furthermore if the channel coherence is limited the advantage of the proposed approach over exhaustive search becomes significant as you can see from the dashed curves this dashed black curve is the exhaustive search when the coherence is uh, uh, the channel coherence is 1000 symbols and we can see that the blue curve has advantage over exhaustive search even with four measurements this experiment assumes that the mismatch between the transmitter and receiver is 20% now we study the performance of weighted l1 minimization compare in comparison with l1 minimization as a function of probability of mismatch we can see that when the mismatch is zero the weighted l1 minimization has a significant advantage but this advantage decreases as the mismatch between sub 6 gigahertz and millimeter wave increases specifically when we reach 43% mismatch that is 43% paths in sub 6 gigahertz and millimeter wave systems are different then the advantage of weighted l1 minimization diminishes and after and if the mismatch is more than 43% one may be better off using the in band only training and this cut off point of 0.43 is consistent with previous theoretical findings when we take into consideration the probability of success of the double root music algorithm in conclusion the weighted cs based recovery is promising to reduce the overhead in comparison with unweighted l1 minimization and it is much better than exhaustive search especially if the coherence time is small the weighted l1 minimization is much beneficial when there is less mismatch between sub 6 gigahertz and mm wave and finally there are some assumptions that we have made in our analysis including the array geometry that we assume to be uniform linear arrays other array geometries like circular and uniform planar arrays are interesting to study we assume an analog architecture whereas hybrid architectures at millimeter wave where both where a limited number of rf chains and digital precoding is uh, combined also we could study the fully digital architectures at mm wave using low resolution analog to digital converters thank you